The year is 2004. Facebook is launched at Harvard University. Across town, the Boston Red Sox win the World Series for the first time since 1918. And meanwhile, I'm down in Virginia driving what cake? A white Chrysler Also in 2004, Motorola releases a cell phone. It's harder to use, less comfortable to hold, and more expensive than almost any that came before it. Yet the Razer V3 becomes the best-selling clamshell of all time, because no one has ever seen anything quite like it. Flash forward 16 years, and it's surprising just how much the new Motorola Razer has in common with its progenitor. The aggressive lines, the pronounced chin, the single carrier exclusivity, there's even a retro mode that emulates the original. Hello, Moto. The trouble is, it's still not a very good phone. But the question is whether that will matter to the target audience. Like its forerunner, the Razer of 2020 is all about the look. Instead of a metallic keyboard and tiny plastic screen, though, the chassis now supports a full-size display that deploys to 6.2 inches and, well, is still made of plastic. We'll come back to that, but this means that when it's open, it's a little narrower, a little taller than what you're probably used to, but otherwise, the Razer feels like most Android phones. That includes performance. For years, I've been pushing people to look beyond the spec sheet and judge a device on its whole package. But I guarantee you, right now, there are comments down below from people talking about how a two-year-old processor is a deal breaker because you shouldn't pay that much for old silicon. Well, I've been using the Razer for eight days, and I've never felt like I was waiting on it. I've never wished it was even a little bit faster. And look, <laughs> I'm a nerd. For the type of customer the Razer is aimed at, the opposite of a nerd, the processor matters about as much as the bubble wrap the box comes in. As for design, this chin down at the bottom may be divisive, but it makes talking on the phone feel somehow more natural. And it offers a convenient platform for the single speaker, antenna array, and the fingerprint sensor. Uh, the fingerprint sensor is very good, it's quick and reliable. Uh, that single speaker, eh, it could be louder. Where the Razer stands out, besides nostalgia, is in how small it can become. Fold the flip down and the display curls into the hinge until it's fully enclosed within the steel frame. And just like that, the phone is literally half the size. It fits in chest pockets, sleeve pockets, even those little backpack compartments I use for business cards. And what's nice about the Razer in particular is you can still make a lot of use out of it when it's closed. Moto Display just as handy today as when it was released in 2013. It lets you read and respond to messages, control your music, talk to Google Assistant, while the Moto gestures jump you into the flashlight with a chop or the camera with a twist. And the Razer's problems begin there, or rather, where it follows the formula of its forebear too closely. The 2004 model had a terrible camera, even for its time, and um, so does this one. Slow to focus, drab color science, just a single focal length. Folks, I'd take you through a whole roll of samples like usual, but the simple fact is the camera is so lackluster that I preferred not to use it for the past week. There are special features like spot color and cinemagraph that are genuinely cool, but with fundamentals this poor, they just don't matter. And speaking of fundamentals, in 2020, shipping the old Android 9 on a phone is not a great look for any manufacturer, especially one with a spotty history of software updates. The compromises continue. The battery is small by modern standards, and while I didn't have as much trouble making it to the end of the day as some of my fellow reviewers, I was still always scraping single digits by bedtime. Motorola also wasn't able to find space for things like wireless charging, and it even replicated the old Razer's terrible side keys, which are too small to feel out and will frustrate you pretty much every day. Lastly, there's that big durability question. Now look, some of this worry is overblown. Yes, you could stick a fingernail beneath the display while you're closing the phone and rip it off if you wanted to, or some dust could fly in there if you're opening it in a sandstorm, but I don't think those are credible concerns. You only spend a second opening or closing the thing, and when it's shut, that display is pretty well protected. That's part of what made clamshells so popular the first time around in the early aughts. 
What worries me are the issues Android Central's Nirav Gandhia and Engadget's Chris Velasco raised about the screen lifting or flexing in spots. Or Mashable's Brenda Stoyar calling out this truly awful squeaky screen door sound from her razor's hinge. Oh. Let's do that again. Let's prove it. Oh my Ooh, god, that's, that's the display! And of course, no failure is so dramatic as inputs Raymond Wong's review device display delaminating. Now, my review device has none of these problems, with the exception of a slightly noisy hinge. But there's no denying that Motorola has some quality control issues here, to say nothing of actually shipping devices to customers on time. Ultimately, the Razer's greatest challenge is that it's no longer alone. When it was announced, it was the only clamshell folding phone, an entirely different take on the category than the Samsung Galaxy Fold, and that gave it real power. But just like back in 2005, Samsung is right on Motorola's heels with a Razer competitor. I filmed a video comparing the two. Please subscribe to the Mr. Mobile on YouTube if you missed it. But the upshot is that the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip is more fully featured, more future-proof, better in almost every respect than the Motorola Razer. And as if that weren't enough, it's cheaper and available on more carriers too. So should you spend $1,500 and possibly switch to exclusive carrier Verizon for your chance to beta test a Razer? I'm obligated to say probably not. As I've told everyone who's ogled my Galaxy Fold in public, foldables are a great idea, and personally, I love them. I'm in it with both feet because I love being on the bleeding edge and it's part of my job. But you should probably wait for the next version before you spend your own money on it. The problem for Motorola is that I think most people will feel like that next version is the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip. And unless you were old enough to be around for the first Razer and you really crave that icon in your pocket once again, it's just a tough sell, given all you have to put up with in exchange. This review was made possible by a Razer review sample provided by Motorola, but Mr. Mobile does not produce paid reviews. Motorola didn't receive an early preview of this video, nor was it granted copy approval. The company is seeing it for the first time right alongside you. Please subscribe to the Mr. Mobile on YouTube so you don't miss my forthcoming review on the Galaxy Z Flip and, of course, every foldable phone coming in 2020. Until next time, thanks for watching and stay mobile, my friends. <laughs>